Hi everybody, thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Dan Pardo and this is Pardo's Turn, my weekly Wednesday web series where I analyze a classic show tune from a music director's point of view, and with the help of a special guest, perhaps shed some light on what makes the gems of our musical theater canon so great. Today I am so happy to introduce my friend and colleague Andrea Prestonario, who played Alison Bechtel in Weston's production of Fun Home, which I music directed over the summer. I'm actually excited to announce that she's playing the role again in January, this time at Baltimore's center stage, so to celebrate, we're singing the song Telephone Wire. In addition to Fun Home, she has been seen on regional stages across the country, with many productions in her native city of Chicago, including Gypsy, Rent, Fiorello, and Sideshow, for which she won a Jeff Award. Her original tribute show, Smoky Town, has been seen both in the Windy City and the Big Apple. You may also recognize her from several nationally televised commercials and the Just Works ad campaign, Boss Face. I've been trying not to repeat musicals on Pardo's turn, but Fun Home is so smartly written that I couldn't resist. Thematically, the song Telephone Wire is all about Allison's inability to communicate with her father, Bruce. They're in the car together, inches apart, and yet they're almost in two different worlds. The idea of using telephone wire as a framing device is really brilliant, as they are literally the lines of communication that connect people and get them talking. But in the song, they also serve another important function, establishing a clear location and setting the passage of time. With each repetition of that guitar vamp, we see the telephone wire running along the side of the road, as if we were in the passenger seat looking out the window. And the phrase itself, how it dips down and repeats, mirrors their physical structure, but instead of telephone poles, the music is held together by bar lines. It may be a stretch, but the fact that it's played on guitar is also noteworthy since it's a stringed, or, dare I say, wired instrument. But as I mentioned in week six with Ring of Keys, almost all of Allison's songs are guitar-centric, which to me helps channel the ethos of lesbian singer-songwriters like Katie Lang, Melissa Etheridge, and the Indigo Girls, all of whom gained prominence in the 1980s and 90s, much like Allison Bechtel herself. As I said before, while Allison and Bruce are in the car together, they are pretty much in their own worlds, Janine Tesori musicalizes this disconnect with great effect, setting their sections in different keys, different meters, and with a different primary instrument. One of my favorite moments of the song comes after the part where Bruce recalls his love for a boy named Norris Jones, whom he met during his first year of college. He reveals that, while other boys messed around, you know, he always knew that he was gay, which launches Allison into her own bridge, ecstatic that she finally has a moment to connect with him but her testimony falls on deaf ears. Not only doesn't he respond lyrically, but her last line, Dad, me too, doesn't get harmonized musically. Rather, the chord that came before just kind of lingers there, until Bruce finally comes in with a non sequitur, failing to acknowledge what she said, or the implied harmony with which she said it. Top to bottom, it's a brilliant song in a equally brilliant score, and frankly, I'm a little jealous that Andrea gets to work on it again so soon. <laughs> Hi, Andrea. How are you? Hi. Good. How are you? Uh, I'm a little allergic, as you can see, so uh, I am not on drugs, audience. Uh, just a, a cat staying overnight. I am not on drugs either. <laughs> <laughs> this is so great to revisit this material. Yes. And, you know, when I reached out to see what you wanted to sing, this was the obvious choice. Uh, but, you know, you've done a lot of classic ingenue roles. Uh, you know, you've done uh, Let's Do Little at least twice, I think. Yeah, and, twice. Uh, yeah. You've done Sarah Brown. I, I uh, think it's still kind of the same journey in, in the way that I would approach a character, um, finding uh, the ways in which we're different, the ways in which we're alike. Um, but there was a, there was something like in terms of the kernel of truth that mm -hmm. I worked with that was that was really like hitting the, the nerve the nerve center. So. Um, I guess in a way that makes it more accessible, um, and, and maybe it's, you don't have to do as much um, reaching for what is that like lived experience like, mm -hmm. but um, but I approach the character in the same way that I approached every other character that right. I played. Allison's an interesting character because uh, there, there's all these things happening around her, yeah. and she's kind of commenting and uh, reflecting. Mm -hmm. um, and you're just physically there the entire yeah. piece. What was what was that like? Is that is that difficult being under the microscope that much? I thought it was going to be, and then it ended up being the greatest gift mm -hmm. to be able to be present the entire 
what, 90 minutes um, on stage with the piece because um, it was just this train that I was on and I got, it, it, it gave back to me um, to be able to stay on the on course. And similar to you being present the entire time, I think the show really benefits from not having an act break. You know, it's, oh yeah, it, oh yeah. I mean, and, and that's yeah. kind of self-evident, but you know, it's, it's the kind of story that you need that 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 constant, you know, single solitary arc. Yeah. You know, there is yeah. no real moment of, you know, cliffhanger tension. You know, it's, it's yeah, because I think it would t it would take the air out of it mm -hmm. in a way. It, it it needs to build and build and crescendo and crescendo. Mm -hmm. in terms While uh, musical theater is very um, LGBT friendly, the the scope uh, of what we experience. Is very is relatively narrow in terms of the stories being told. I co-founded Ring of Keys, which is a national network of queer women, trans, and gender non-conforming artists working in an um, on and off stage in musical theater. And we launched in January, so it's only eleven months old. Um, and it was just a few months after that that I got the call to play Allison and Fun Home. So mm -hmm. it's it's been a, a wonderful like. A variation on a theme this year. Uh, I, I co-founded with my friend Royer Bacchus, who is also a queer woman in musical theater, and the story goes, how we met is, is we were doing a, a reading of an opera thing that our friend Michael had written, and Michael is a gay man, and um, he said to both of us separately, like, I want you to meet somebody who's in the show, she's a lesbian, and you're like, <laughs> you know, like, it, the, the, like he's all jokey, jokey, but it, mm -hmm. they, I think there's an implication there, and so we were like, let's start a club, kind of joking, mm -hmm. and then it kind of got serious, and we got a website and social media channels, and um, uh, started building this thing. And what it is, the mission is twofold: it's community and visibility, creating a community for our members, um, so that to combat that feeling of isolation, of course, and. Um, the second component is a hiring resource, which is through our member directory, which mm -hmm. is on our website, ringofkeys.org. Great. And uh, that member directory is listing all of the artists that are keys, which is what we call our members, keys. And um, that is a, a resource for anyone looking to hire someone who self-identifies as queer, bi, lesbian, trans, gender non-conforming, gender queer, non-binary, the, mm -hmm. the diversity of genders that queerness contains. Now, uh, you're producing shows uh, under mm -hmm. that same umbrella. You mm -hmm. have one this, uh, this week at Birdland. Do you mm -hmm. want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, this was just one small component of the huge membership, but it was a concert called Queering the Stage, and it was a um, concert evening celebrating our members and their work. We haven't seen the umbrella of LGBTQ stories being told beyond gay, cis, white men. And, right. and, and I like to say that it's kind of a yes and mm -hmm. response to that because I don't want to see those stories go away necessarily. It's, it's more just like adding to that. The mantra that I've started, which is queering the stage, mm -hmm. um, and that idea is making it, it, it's currently, Broadway feels very gay and I'd love to see it feel more queer, just yes. to say more inclusive under mm -hmm. that queer umbrella. You're doing Allison for the second time uh, coming up and uh, you've you mentioned that you've done Eliza twice. What is it uh, what's it like to do a role for a second time? Um, what, what's your do you kind of go in as your as a clean slate or kind of uh, what you did last time and then adjust it from there or what, what's your process? Yeah the last time I did um, when I did Eliza twice, I did consecutive yet separate productions, and there was only two weeks between the two oh, productions. Wow. So it was um, it was a difficult task to go in with a clean slate, mm -hmm. and you obviously, uh, I, I I think that would be a disservice. Uh, you, I think you spend a lot of the time though the second wrap time around, which is what I intend will happen going to Baltimore, mm -hmm. is um, unlearning a lot of things um, because you you want to be open and malleable and it's a new collaboration which I'm so excited about. Of I'm course. so excited to see what the, my new director, Hana Sharif, who is mm -hmm. such a badass, I'm so excited to work with her, um, what, what she'll bring to the table and, and how we'll work together. And to me that's 
the most exciting part. Do you know if uh, is it a proscenium space or is it going to be in the it round is a again? Proscenium, I believe. So that cool. also is going to yeah, be. Yeah, so it's just going to change it yeah. by default. That too much air. Um. Mm -mm. <laughs> new project? The old house out on Route 150. Oh, you've seen it, Al. It's been sitting empty for 40, 50 years, at least. Telephone wire. Stop too fast. Telephone wire. Make this not the past. This car ride. This is where it has to happen. There must be some other chances. There's a moment I'm forgetting. Where earlier than I thought. Coming in? Telephone wire. That was our last night. So thank you so much for coming on. This is awesome. Just to recap, you're doing Fun Home at Baltimore Center. Baltimore Center Stage. Stage. And uh, do you have dates on that? Yes, January 17th through 
through February 25th. Great. Um, so you'll find some links below. And uh, I actually met you through your partner, Claudia Blackers. Yes. Uh, is she uh, working on anything now that we can come and yes, support? Yes, she has. Um, it's their ninth year at Birdland Jazz. Mm -hmm. uh, they have their Christmas show that runs the 22nd through the 25th. It's a really, really heartwarming evening. Awesome. Um, so we'll so have links uh, for that, too. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll see you next Wednesday. Bye.